Um, this is courtesy of NorthJersey.com. Big up, um, who? Who should shout out here? Big up Joe Budden, actually. And also big up a few other people. But Joe Budden, I think, was the first person to call out this scam. And if you're not aware, DJ Envy, right? This guy here, uh, DJ Envy. Let's see if I can find him. This guy is involved in a you know a pretty crazy case where he was promoting these sort of like um house flipping seminar type of things i don't know if you guys have heard of them where essentially for some reason i guess you know black and brown people who felt like they could have their ticket out of poverty were getting enamored i think around the pandemic time with the idea of kind of you know having a port port a property portfolio and being able to kind of you know buy houses and flip them so the idea was you'd buy a dilapidated home you do it up in terms of you know in interior design all that malarkey and make it livable and then you'd flip it and the idea behind that was to create some money for yourself create some wealth and obviously um, allow you to be a landlord so that you had like you know um, income coming in all the time and it was a very very um it was a very appealing thing because it legitimately provided some people with a, a legit route out of poverty but naturally it just seemed too good to be true and a lot of people called it out at the time and now it's being you know basically seen here that it definitely was a scam because courtesy of northjersey.com it says north jersey real estate influencers radio dj accused of defrauding almost two million from two men and so far i've heard it's even worse because there's other people putting together civil cases as well against it so clearly it's showing that you know, D, you know dj envy came into this basically pushing this idea that he was going to be a person that would help people and get them on the property ladder um with his you know house flipping seminars that he was doing with his other dude and it turned out to be a whole entire scam where they essentially it kind of was a bit of a ponzi scheme in a way from what it sounds like but let's kind of read the article here it says a new jersey real estate influencer and couple um well-known really dj are the center of a new lawsuit claiming that they conned two men into investing 1.5 million in apartment in P Patterson with no results to show. Anthony Barron and Anthony Martini filed a suit in the state superior court in Passaic County on July 6th, seeking a number of damages, including compensatory and consequential punitive damages. The lawsuit says that Barron and Martini invested in a 50 unit department, sorry, apartment building project in Main Street in Patterson. Um, that's that's New Jersey, right? Patterson, I'm assuming. Um, I think a rap who lives in there. Lots of do people rap people live there and shit. I always hear Patterson be mentioned. The per se Bergen County residents Cesar and Jennifer Pena disappeared, taking their money and leaving Baron and Martini with nothing to show for their investment. Honestly, people are awful in it. Um, the number, the phone number for Cesar Pena's one-on-one -on -one real estate construction company um, did not have a voicemail set up. It continues. It says the suit says that in 2018 baron heard radio DJ, radio personality dj envy of power 105 whose real name is rashawn casey talk about his partnership with the penis what sort of name is rashawn that's got to be caribbean in it rashawn two a's rashawn what the kind of name is that fucking hell Rashawn. According to the suite, Casey would buy undervalued homes in Patterson and flip them to sell to or to rent for positive cash flow or short term investment. Casey did not immediately respond. In 2019, the Pinas and Casey specifically promoted the Taylor Apartments investment um, to Baron and Martini. That September, Cesar Pena set up, um, sent Martini a formation certificate and stock purchase agreements to purchase 25% of Taylor's apartments to own and develop the project. The lawsuit says Jennifer Pena had the remaining interest in the project. According to a lawsuit, the Pena's told them the project was already funded with a two point. Oh my God, they got them on that one, innit? The told them was already funded with 2.5 million investment from Jennifer and the construction company loan of 3.5 million. The 5.6 estimated construction cost would be covered by the investment and the construction loan and the martini's investment would have covered costs overruns and operating costs until the units were rented or sold after having such launch having after having lunch with casey and sister Pena, imagine handing over my people it's over lunch god almighty over a fucking chicken caesar salad um baron was convinced um to buy into the project says a Pena 
asked for 1 million investment for 25% ownership, but Barron didn't want to invest that much money, the suit says. Instead, he agreed to do 500,000, thinking he was being smart, but, and he still got ripped off. Barron will get 12.5 stake. According to the opinions, the 7 million in then existing assets and Barron's 500,000 investment were more than sufficient to cover all the costs to complete the constructions of the Taylor Apartments project to fund the operation cost until the units were, could be sold or rented. The suit says Martini's signature was needed needed to add to the new member of the company but it wasn't immediately provided but Caesar Pena emailed Baron documents that supposedly contained Martini's signature the suit claims opinions forged Martini's signature Caesar Pena told Baron that he was construction delays or because of COVID-19 pandemic classic Baron said that in late 2021 Caesar Pena told him the construction had begun um, and would continue straight through to 2021 until it was completed and the pandemic had sent re rent prices through the roof which would mean that they would make more money than previously stated the lawsuit says martini asked about the construction status and was told it was continuing <laughs> honestly these scammers are awful you know what for me is the most damaging part about it and i think again my naivete always kind of tells i just think it's so grimy to do this to people that look like you like your fans people look like especially in this regard the whole premise around like you know flipping houses from what i can see it's usually pointed and we have a lot of a scene here in the uk also we have people influencers who do the whole flipping houses malarkey on youtube and it's usually promoted to people who don't have much money but want to make some money to kind of you know give their kids a chance to go to uni to pay for their kids first houses whatever just give yourself some extra money at the end of the month that's mostly who is aimed at so it's usually aimed at i feel like working class or middle class people who don't have much to begin with but want to make some level of wealth and then they end up kind of scamming you that's something that i feel like yes is incredibly deplorable like people who are generally trying to get out of poverty trying to create some generational wealth for themselves right trying to kind of create some sort of legacy for themselves or their family or be the first persons in their family to make some decent money and you know you know what that is what that's like for people that are kind of black and brown and have grown up in the same environment that you have who have gone through the same struggles you know how hard it is to get some money and then they get it and then they fucking scam it all away it's awful man it's so bad and usually what they do from what I've seen here, they usually scam you cleverly because what they do is that the first few people that come in, like a good Ponzi scheme, they get the benefits, right? The first few people that come in, the flipping houses thing actually works. So they come in, they help you build up your portfolio. They help you to build, you know, for building constructions and renovations and leasing and letting and renting. They help you with all of that. And you become their kind of, you become their, um, you know, what, what are they called? You're, you become one of their sort of like testimonial subjects that they use. And then they'll use you for like the fucking marketing outreach. So they'll put a clip of you. They'll show you, oh, here's how much money you had in your account. And then, you know, this company made you good. And they'll use you in the marketing campaign to get loads of new registries and signups. So essentially those first people that got rich, you know, did it one time and only. And then they use that first group of people to then scam those people down the line. It's fucking abhorrent, man. I absolutely hate it. Um, it continues. Um, but but the, there are some people that say, if you get scammed out of those sort of stuff, then you deserve it. I know Tim Dillon has that kind of point of view. Like, because these things are so obviously a scam that if you are dumb enough to let, you know, give your money to these people that you kind of deserve it. I don't really have that kind of point of view because I feel like a lot of these people are just trying to find a way out and they usually will trust people that look like them or are from the same sort of like background or environment as them more so and the scammers kind of prey on that they use that to their advantage but anyway martini repeatedly demanded his money back the suit says but cesar pena kept putting him off or not answering baron invested three hundred thousand and flipped to dow <laughs> i'm sorry but i'm not investing anything in a business that's called flip to dow are you insane with a let with a number in it no i i refuse baron invested three hundred thousand in flip to dow another real estate investment um trusting with from the peniers which the suit says was similar to the fraudulent tactics according to the lawsuit flip to dow would allow people to use cryptocurrencies on credit cards oh no oh to own fractional shares of a building as little as a hundred dollars are you insane that even sounds weird so you own a hundred dollars of a block of flats 
What? Excuse me? Okay, maybe Tim Dillon was right. Maybe if you get scammed by these people, you deserve it. Jesus Christ, people. Pinyas did not stop with um, Taylor Apartments. Um, apparently emboldened, they next solicited, solicited, sorry, Baron and Martini to purchase fractional shares of real estate and marketing investment opportunities as a real estate trust. So imagine the fucking marketing for this on, on Instagram. You can be you can you can be on the property ladder. You can have a property portfolio for as little as a hundred dollars. They'll say like that. You can have a property portfolio for as for less than the price of Yeezys. That's how they probably sold it. You could have a property portfolio for less than the price of Yeezys, for less than the price of some Louboutins, for less than the price of some Balenciaga sneakers. Oh man. <laughs> God almighty. As part of the operating of agreement, um, each owning member was given the right to review the books and the company was required to provide a quarterly and annual reports, which the suit says the Peñas never did. The lawsuit says Baron contacted Casey to confront him after an Instagram post about how the Peñas and Casey were running a 13 million plus Ponzi scheme. So that's this is fucking funny. Most likely he got pulled in by the Instagram promotions and promote ads. And then he also find out it was a Ponzi scheme because of an Instagram news clipping or something. Can you imagine how funny that is? They reel you in through Instagram promote ads and then you find out it's a Ponzi scheme because of an Instagram financial blog thing or something, news platform. <laughs> <laughs> he contacted a co-founder and attorney who had allegedly um, involved with flip to dow but they told him that they were not several other people began posting on social media to report that they had been defrauded the lawsuit says i've also heard right that allegedly these scammers do this because no i've heard that the success of why these scammers are so no i've heard sorry let me go back again i'm i'm getting brendan brain i've heard that the reason why these guys are so successful sometimes is because some people that get scammed off of this sort of stuff are so embarrassed when they realize they get scammed they don't want to admit it so they just kind of take their l quietly sometimes hundreds of thousands oftentimes millions of pounds they get scammed and rather than kind of cry about it or make a post about it online and bring attention to it they'd rather just kind of go you know kind of slick back into the bushes like fucking brendan Sh like homer simpson that's what i've heard they really honestly regardless don't they just don't want to talk about it because it's so embarrassing which again kind of gives the scammers advantage because they then can then swindle more people so it's a really fucking horrible cyclical type of system that they're doing and it's a really if you think about it, it's kind of a four level kind of scam you scam somebody outright in a ridiculous way they get so embarrassed that when they realize they get scammed they don't want to report it then it gives you more time and space to recruit more people to scam and so it continues while still using the same people that maybe got didn't get scammed in the first sort of group of people that kind of got brought in and you're using the same faces because something you notice a lot of these online make money things a lot of the testimonials um are from people who first got in at the first time but also they don't refresh them there's never new testimonials it's always the first sort of cohort of people they never have new people okay cool this person signed up in july or this person signed up at the beginning of fucking april and this is what they've done it's always the people that started up at the beginning of beginning of the fucking thing but never new fresh people that's always a sign that's a scam anyway baron demanded his money back and the lawsuit says that pinias have not responded to further requests for money to be returned and then they appear to not be living in their home in franklin lakers <laughs> recent instagram posts show jennifer pena in miami says a pena's instagram account is no longer active <laughs> but the couple's flipping nj account posted the video on the 10th of july motherfuckers as far as baron can determine the pena simply took his money for their own personal use um to pay off victims of an earlier scheme i actually want to see what the instagram account looks like flipping nj let's see what this looks like i'm really curious to see what this scam actually looks like in full hd let's see this what's flipping nj look like is it just loads of bugattis and loads of fucking rolls royces and balcony views look at that look at this look at this shit <laughs> you know daughter graduated from college you know nice for some people you've got group economics flip to dow no such thing as whatever promotion here you've got again clips of building sites seminars more building sites 
more building sites, daughters, driving nice cars, hanging out with people, live shows, beaches. Just scammy, in it? It just looks like a fucking scam Instagram account, looking at it, to be fair. <laughs> All these infographic type of things just look like pure scamology. But oh, I don't know, man. I feel bad for the people that got scammed. I can't lie. I, I can't not feel bad for them for getting robbed. But, you know, it kind of is what it is, I guess, in this regard. 